Hey, so in this video, I want to walk you through these nine secrets for ultimate productivity, the ones that made me a superhuman copywriter, the ones that got me to 5 10k a month every single month, the ones I share with my students inside my mentorship where people pay me a lot of money. And so I want to share with you these nine secrets so you can do the same, so you can make more money, so you can become more productive, so you can get more shit done. And you can apply this to copywriting, to studying, to your work, to cleaning dishes, to whatever. So it's going to help you a lot. So the first thing is, I fight train every single day. And it's not just for the confidence, it's not just for the skills, it's not just for the fight skills. It's not just to go on the ring, beat people up and then flex about it. It's, it's not just about that. So the, way, the reason I do this is because when you do this type of activity that raises your cardio, that's cardio based, that's raising your heartbeat, it, it clears your head. I don't know if you've ever been through this type of stage where you've go, w went through a really good run, maybe you've done some sprints, maybe you went through some high intensity cardio or exercise, but after you're done with this, you feel so good, you feel so relieved, you feel fresh and you feel like you're ready to conquer the world. And so this is also a good way for you to clear up your mind after, let's say you were doing deep work for many hours and now you wanna rest. If you do this, if you just go for the run, it's gonna reset your brain because a lot of people tell me, "Oh, where is this? How do I? How do I keep training? How do I keep working when I feel so tired?" It's simple. Just go for a run. Just some type of high, high pace activity that raises your heartbeat up because you, you. I already explained. I don't need to explain this anymore. So just, just take more work for it. I make more money than you. Just take more work for it. So yeah, the second thing I do is healthy diet. 95% of the time. So, what does my diet consist of? It consists of meat, chicken, fish, rice, yogurt, honey, uh, whole bread, whatever it's called, nuts, eggs, fruit. That's, that's what it consists of for 90 to 95% of the time. And that's why I look so fucking shredded. So, yeah, it's this food, it's its like this car analogy you've probably heard 17 million times in the past. It's like you have this car, you have this Ferrari, and you put you can put the best gas into it or you can put water into it or crappy gas into it. When is it going to perform the best? When it has the best gas. And that's what you want to do too, okay? If you don't put in good food, your brain's not going to be able to function. It's going to spend so much time for you to... You've probably realized, you've probably went through this. You, you, you had pizza, you had some fatty pasta, and then for the next few hours, you couldn't even think. It, it felt like you wanted to sleep. And that's why, because your brain and your body spend so much energy digesting all this crappy food that it doesn't allow you to function. It doesn't allow you to do the work. Because the thing is, it's, I don't know if this is true. It's like when you eat, I don't know what the fuck that food was, but when you eat some cer certain food that is super processed, it might take your body days or even a week to process. Isn't that insane? So yeah, I'd rather have all of my energy into making money into this instead of satisfying my tongue for like five seconds. So yeah, this is what I do. And then if you just have like 5-10% of the time just something like a little ice cream or a little whatever, it, it's cool. If you just have it occasionally, it, it, it won't affect you. That's what I've realized, at least in my case. I'm, I'm not an expert, so I don't know, but this is what helped me. So the third thing is sleeping. I've realized that if I don't sleep at least seven to eight hours a day, I cannot even function as a human being. Like today, I slept like eight, eight. I was on in bed for like nine hours, and I believe I slept for eight or eight something. Because the thing is, just because you're in bed for seven, eight hours doesn't mean you're sleeping for seven, eight hours. Because it might take you like one hour 30 minutes for you to sleep so that's how it goes you might even wake up in the middle of the night so you're losing sleep there so you gotta you gotta be in bed for at least eight nine hours if you want to sleep seven to eight hours so don't don't neglect this don't don't hear to what the gurus are saying i i know what you've heard i know what you've heard money doesn't sleep so you don't sleep if you want to get rich don't sleep don't don't listen to this crap because if you don't sleep then you're gonna function at like 50%, 40% of what you normally would, or even less. Sometimes that I, I sleep for six hours, it, whether that's because I'm traveling and I can't sleep for, for that day, I feel like dog shit for the day. I can't train as hard. I can't be focused. I, there's, I can't. 
There's no deep work. Because in order for you to do the deep work, you need to sleep. If you don't sleep, if you don't rest, then you're not going to be able to have deep work for the day. So you got to sleep. That's a non-negotiable. And that's at least for me. Maybe for you, it's six hours, seven hours, whatever. But in my case, where I train so hard every single day as well, if I don't sleep seven, eight hours, I'm done. And seven? Uh, I don't know about seven, man. It's, it's at, I think it's eight. My sweet spot is eight. I got to sleep eight hours. So, yeah. The fourth thing is positive people around you with a clear mindset and fuck the losers. When you are around losers... They project their beliefs into you. They project their negativity into you. And when you're around negative people, doesn't it? Does, don't you feel like they suck up your energy? That, that's what happened to me. And when other people suck up your energy, you don't have that energy to put into copywriting, into business, into fighting, into training, into everything else that's productive, that's going to get you the result you want. It's, it's not going to allow you to, to plant the seeds you need so you can make the money, so you can become better, so you can become smarter, so you can get the relationship, so you can do whatever you want. Because when you're around these people, they take up all of this fucking energy that you could have invested there. So in my case, when I'm around positive people, for example, when I'm, when I'm having a coaching call with my students, it's like everyone there is so good. It's such a fucking insane environment. We're talking, we're sharing stories and... The reason I like it is because after the calls, I feel so energized. I don't know. I'm, I'm talking for like two hours, but I got off the call. I get off the call and I'm still so energized. It's insane. I, I can't even believe how this works. So yeah, anyway, let's get into the fifth thing. Limit how many different voices you have in your ears, aka limit content consumption. And there's a very good reason for that because these gurus, they're going to have they're going to project their beliefs into you they're going to tell you what to believe they're going to tell you oh do this do that do this do this and you're gonna have so many different voices in your head and the thing is every single voice is gonna be conflicting to each other so one person might do one tell you to do one thing and the other person is gonna tell you to do the another thing and the reason you don't want that is because you can get confused so easily this is at least what used to happen to me. I used to hear all these gurus like uh, Hormozy and then the other one and then another one and then another one. One person was telling give value what the other person was saying don't give value. And it's so conflicting, man. It's so it's so weird to hear to all these gurus. So I'd say find one guru, find one mentor, listen to their advice, their advice only, and then go from there. And then once you feel like you've taken all the advice from them, once you feel like you've sucked all, all the value from them, then you go into the next one. That's what I do in my case, at least. So yeah, do this. It's going to make you a lot of money. The next one, abundance mindset instead of a scarcity one. Positive thinking versus negative thinking. That way you keep attracting more positive things. Because I don't know if you know this, but the if you, I don't know if you know about the law of attraction, but it's, it's really important. Like I've read a book about it. It's called The Secret. It's literally a secret. And it basically says that the law of attraction is basically just as powerful as and real as the law of gravity. Because when you think about positive things, when you're grateful about these positive things, then the universe is it's giving you more positive things. But you've, you've probably realized from, I don't know, maybe your parents, maybe somebody you know of, just picture somebody you know who is negative. Like he's super negative or she. They're super negative. All they're doing is they're watching the news. They're consuming this content. They and they're negative all around. They're negative. Like every interaction they have is negative. Even even their face has changed. Even their face has changed, and now they're fucking negative. They're, you can read their face that all they're thinking about is negativity. What? Let me ask you this question: What do these people keep attracting? Is it good things? No. Is it? It's bad things, right? So yeah. They keep attracting these bad things. They keep thinking about the bad things. They keep attracting more bad things. And it's it's like this domino effect that they keep thinking about the bad things and they keep attracting bad things and it keeps going. It never stops. The one bad thing brings the other. And so that's what I want to save you from. So the same goes the other way. If you're always having positive thinking, you're going to attract positive things. Keep this in mind. So the next one, abuse coffee. 
the abuse the fuck out of coffee. I don't know what you're talking about. Abuse the fuck out of coffee. Have this coffee here, and I'm gonna get an another one in a few hours probably. And that's why I'm probably so energized. I don't know the fact that I'm passionate about what I talk about. I, I love this shit. I love talking about productivity. I love talking about business. I love talk talking about covering. I love talking about fighting. It's insane. So I piece the fuck out of coffee. It gives you energy. Don't listen to what these fat doctors are telling you about, oh, don't drink so much coffee. Do this, do this, do this. No, no. Listen to what I tell you. Listen to what, like Andrew Tate, for example. He's fucking a thousand times richer than me. He's a hundred million times richer than me. <laughs> I don't fucking know. What does he do? He drinks coffee. So, what does that mean? You gotta drink coffee. I gotta drink coffee. And I'm not saying this in a in a way where I'm trying to copy them and I'm trying to to you know appear as their fucking superior. Not not at all. But I'm just saying this to prove my point. Drink coffee. Just try it. Just try it. So another thing: take time off from work every single day. Most copywriters have this limiting belief, they have this belief, like from these gurus, that you have to work 12 hours, 14 hours, 16 hours, 18 hours a day. You have to work all fucking day, you have to stop going out with your friends, you have to stop, don't, not even care about girls or relationships. Like, all you have to do is business, 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 and then you're gonna make more money, and then finally you can make work about folks on other things. But it doesn't work like that, at least not in my case. So, in my first year, I used to be this thing. I had stopped going out with friends, had stopped seeing my family, like, I, I wasn't even responding to their phone calls, bro, this is how serious this was. My friends, not existent, girlfriends, not existent, family time, fun time, no, not existent, nothing, nothing. All I did was outreach, business, copywriting, that's it, mindset, and going to the gym, that's it. And so, and, so, and for one period, I had even stopped going to the gym. And what I realized for that year is, I made only $8,000. My first year of being a copywriter, a full year, $8,000. That's it. Maybe it was less. Maybe it was $6,000. I don't even remember. So we do this. And then the next year, I start picking things up. I start going to Muay Thai training once again. I start going out with friends almost every single day, at least two to three times a week. I start spending more time with my family. I started seeing more girls, and I started having off time. And when I did that, I scaled to five, ten thousand dollars a month. Every single month since then, I've, I've never dropped below six thousand dollars ever since then. And why? H how do you explain this? One year I don't do shit. I do everything. Nothing pops up. The next one, I start doing. I started enjoying my time more. I, let, I also let my subconscious take over because you got to have some time off. So your subconscious can take over. It can give you the ideas because your subconscious knows everything. It knows everything you felt, everything you've experienced, everything you've read. And so when you're allowing your subconscious to take over and give you these ideas, that's when you scale. It allows you to come up with fresh ideas. So yeah, this is something I'm leveraging a lot. I'm, I'm getting on showers and I have my phone next to me and... In the shower, I'm probably going to come up with fucking five good ideas. So yeah, leverage your subconscious, take some time off from work, and yeah, it's also going to help you become more happy. And f fuck that shit, bro, that you can't be happy. Fuck that shit, that you can't be happy. Of course you can be happy, man. Why not? This is this is just a belief that the gurus are, are telling you. Just because, listen to this, just because somebody has told you something, doesn't mean it's true. You always have to think about what they're telling you, you always have to think about the incentive, and you always have to think about, is this actually true? You have to, to filter what they're telling you. This is something I, I, I used to never do in the past, and I used to catch people's beliefs. Like, I used to have a certain belief, and then I would watch an Andrew Tate video or something, and then I, my, my whole beliefs would change, and I, I don't even know why. And here's the thing, here's how to know if you have a belief or not. It's, can you explain why you have this belief? If you can't explain why you have this belief, it's not your belief. So yeah. And the last part is, stay true to your passion. The reason we... I've read this from a book. The reason we accumulate stress in our lives is because we are away from our purpose while doing all this other bullshit that we hate. Like working a job or going to college. So, let me give you an example. So, most of us, we're going to college, we're going back and then we feel stressed. Or 
a job, whatever. And that could be whatever you want for you. Something you don't want to do. You do that thing and then you come back home and you don't feel relieved. You feel like you feel stressed. You feel like you've accumulated stress. You feel like you're away. You're not doing what you want to do. But let me give you this example. I don't know if you know this. If you've been around my channel for more than a second, you've probably heard about this. I'm a fighter. I love fighting. I want to compete in the Olympics. And I'm training three or four hours a day, every single day, to get there. So, after each training session, I feel so refreshed. I feel so refreshed. I feel like it doesn't matter if I'm tired. And this goes back to another point I told you. Which was what? Which was it? I think it was the first one. Yeah. Once you train, you feel all these good emotions or once you get your heartbeat up you feel all these good emotions and then you can work again so this is what i do i train and then i can keep working and all the stress i've accumulated throughout my day i can let it off it leaves my body every because it's not just about the fighting part it's not just about the heartbeat part it's because i am staying true to my purpose and i'm staying close to my purpose because the closer you are to your purpose the less stress you accumulate. And this is something you probably realized if you went, you've done something you want, you, maybe that thing isn't fighting for you. Here's the thing, it doesn't have to be fighting and it doesn't have to be training. Like, even though I would suggest you do it. That's something could be, I know people in my close circle, they're making six figures with copywriter, copywriting, and their passion is fucking painting. Their passion is fucking photography. It, it can be whatever. It can be whatever. It, it doesn't matter doesn't matter what the thing is so yeah these are the nine secrets that made me a superhuman copywriter and making 5 10k a month every single month and i hope they can do the same for you let me know if you have any questions also make sure to like subscribe share share with your grandma and talk soon